فهمت Uh, audio is not clear. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh, everyone? Yeah, it is not clear, Ramesh. Okay. Yeah, fine then. Let me uh, take it. I will uh, so explain. So, okay. I, I won't play this, okay? Then let me design that to you. Okay, so basically we have uh, different type of applications. Uh, application is nothing but, so any application which serves for the end users or customers. So basically your problem will be solved with the application. So that is software based code will be there and that will run internally and it will be to service the purpose of the customers. So now we have a, so different type of applications like uh, web applications, desktop applications, mobile applications, right? These are the three types of applications we have. And mobile applications, Basically, it, it built on now uh, mobiles, okay? So, you have so many types, desktop application, web applications, and mobile applications, okay? So, desktop applications, basically, you don't need any internet. They will just know run without any internet and if you have the exe file in your machine in your laptop or a desktop anywhere and if you just double click on that your desktop application will launch so whereas web application you need an internet okay you need an internet to run that and you will open a browser in that browser you will type so www dot so the application dot com something right like amazon dot com google dot com will type right the same way you will type it that's the web application so mobile applications so the applications which runs on the mobile so it can be app or it can be you know browser you can open and you can launch the application that's the mobile applications so here uh, you have you know again so all this the, all three types of application purpose is so to accomplish something so what customer needs that's the so any any type of application purpose and okay who are involved in this to develop the applications so there are many people will be there uh, from requirements gathering to till end, whatever you are supplying. So you have like first product owner or business analyst will be there. Then development team for developing the applications. Then testing team also part of the application. Uh, so shipping time and you know, testing time. 
And then we have a DevOps team also will be there. So properly deploying. So all these uh, things will be taken care by a DevOps team. Our SRE team will be there. So these are the different teams will be involved in the any application development. So developers are crucial. Then testers. Once the development is done, then testing team will participate. Okay, so that's the uh, applications. I mean, see, I, as I mentioned, product owner will be there. And then you have a, so the owner will uh, gather all the requirements. So what are the no? Each page development, what requirements you need, he, he will gather all the requirements. So then you have, uh, no, uh, so architect will be there. So architect is basically, he will design how applications should you know, work, what are the flows will be there, which technology should be used, all this you know, he is going to take care. So the architect will take care. The architect is a crucial again. And then you have a you know, uh, developer. So development team who will write the code. And uh, so basically, they will use some programming language and develop the application. Once the development is done, and they will use uh, different design documents. The architect will design those documents and they will use this architect design documents and some programming language skill set this developer is having and they will design based on that and they based on all these requirements. Everything will be, so based on the requirements only, these people will work. Even QA engineer, once the development is done, so application is ready for testing, the QA team will be involved. That means testing team will be involved. They will test the application and uh, so on different, different environments, development environment, QA environment, stays, and all different environments. The testing team has to test it thoroughly and you will give a sign off. Once you give the sign off, then, so the DevOps engineer will take care and to, okay, so what he will do, the DevOps engineer will take that code and he will deploy in the, so in the servers. So he will create an infrastructure for a deployment and uh, that's what the DevOps engineer responsibility, okay. So these are the people who are all involved in the, so entire application development. Any questions till now? No. Okay. So uh, that that's the main people involved. And let's see. Uh, so again, I want to explain in the application architecture, there are uh, two types of concepts is mostly will listen in the IT industry now. One is a uh, monolithic application architecture, microservice oriented architecture. So what is monolithic architecture? So monolithic architecture is nothing but the entire code, okay? So the entire code is de deployed and test, everything will be in one server. So that's the a monolithic architecture. So basically a monolithic architecture is nothing but, so, any user interface, business logic, data interface, database. So these are all the different components in the any application. So you have a front end, you have a logic, and then a data. So that talks to a database, database where the data will store here. So these are the components of any application. So, but all this will be put it in one server that is called monolithic architecture okay that is called monolithic architecture see this is the one so user interface business logic data so everything you will keep in one area so one server basically you can say one server you will keep and that will talk to a database maybe database outside or generally inside also it will be there this is the more problematic. So once upon a time, this approach people used to follow, but this approach is having a lot of uh, difficulties. What are the difficulties? 
So day to day, you know, the code is going to increase and more functionality is adding there. And that will give a burden to the server also. So, and if you make change in one area, it will affect all the areas. Again, you have to test one more time. It will burden to the all the team members. So to overcome that, so people are following. They are migrating to monolithic to microservice oriented architecture. So that I'll explain. So that's the complete. So developer will write the code. So and uh, no application will be ready and tested thoroughly signed up by QA team, then DevOps engineer will take that, he will package the entire code and he will deploy in the server. That's the any time this architecture will be there. So what is that? So again, product owner will give the requirements, architect will uh, design the application, development team will write the code and testing team will test that and give the sign off. And then DevOps team will take that application and they will make a package and then he will deploy into a live server. So this is the approach people use to follow in one upon item. Now, okay, over the period of time, right? Over the period of time, see, this is all becoming a problem. Speed to deploy is a bigger problem. Uh, speed to build the application is a bigger problem and deliver the no, this code, whatever he has written, is a bigger problem with this monolithic architecture. So to overcome all these problems, so people has come uh, another approach that is microservice architecture. So what is this microservice architecture is? Again, these components are same, okay? So these components are same. All, uh, you know, what are the components I explained? So user interface, front end and business logic backend. So data interface, it will talk to, so the database and this one, all these components are common. But each service is independently be, so developed, tested and deployed. So if you want another service, so suppose if you take, uh, you know, uh, so make my trip.com website, so they have a, Hotel service and a flight mechanism, flight booking mechanism and a bus ticketing mechanism. So these are different services. Okay, each service is separate. That's how applications are developed now. So independently, if you make change on the hotel management service, you don't need to worry about the other booking system. So ticketing, you know, a flight booking system or a bus ticketing system. You don't need to make any changes. So that's the microservice. Each service is designed separately. That's what the microservice. So monolithic, what we did, monolithic means everything will be in one server. So this entire thing will be in one server. And if you make change in one area, it will affect in other areas. That was the problem. And also speed to deploy and uh, uh, deliver the product is very difficult with this and more testing required. There's a lot of problems here. So where it is going to break, if you make one change, we don't know. That they are so overcome with this uh, microservice architecture. So the microservice architecture basically, so increase the so development capacity and deployment uh, so easily you can do, and you don't need to worry. So the other service is going to break. So that's the main uh, advantage of this uh, microservice architecture. Deploy your application easily. So one separate server will be there for each service. And you can easily manageable. Uh, so the coding, testing, deployment easy, very easy with this microservice architecture because you are making change in one area, you don't need to touch other areas and it won't affect. So you can scale up them whenever you require. So that's the advantage of this uh, microservice architecture, basically. 
So, so monolithic, uh, there is one more uh, serverless uh, architecture, serverless applications. So serverless architecture means you don't need any server to deploy the code. So that all will be taken care by the cloud. So we have a, a different cloud providers, Amazon, Google, Azure Cloud, AWS Cloud, GCP Cloud. GCP means Google Cloud. AWS means Amazon Cloud. And uh, you have uh, micro, uh, no, Microsoft uh, Cloud, Azure. So these are the different clouds are uh, available. They are going to provide everything to you. You can just write the code and you can deploy it automatically. So that's the, you don't need to worry about the infrastructure. <laughs> Where is the server? All this, you don't, <laughs> sorry. You don't need to worry about that. That's the serverless architecture. So no worries about infrastructure, no worries about uh, deployment, all this. You, you just worry about your code, how to write the code. So test it, deploy it. That's it. So very quick with this serverless architecture. That's what the three types of application architectures we have. One is monolithic architecture, microservice oriented architecture, and serverless architecture. In the monolithic, what will happen? All the components of the application, the front end, middle layer, and back end. Front end means the user interface that you are seeing, and back end means the business logic where it will be, you know, will be there, the entire code. And the database means where data will store them. So these all layers will keep in the monolithic in one server only. But when it comes to uh, microservice architecture, each service is independently, all these components, again, front end, uh, middle layer, and database, separate for each service. So that is the uh, advantage here with the microservice. So that if you make in one service a change, it won't affect in other services. You don't need to test again that one. You don't need to worry about other services. Like you have email service and payment service and different services will be there. So online booking system service. See, if you make in, in a, any of the one service, you don't need to touch other services. That is the advantage with the microservice architecture. Serverless architecture is you, you don't need to worry about the servers. You don't need to worry about the systems and laptops. All this servers is a big, big servers. Okay, where you can store large uh, code and everything. That you don't need to worry with this serverless architecture. Those are taken care by the cloud providers. Who are cloud providers? Amazon, AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, Oracle OCI. So these are the different cloud providers are there. They will give, no? You write the code and you can deploy wherever you want. That's a serverless architecture. So all this will be there. So write code and deploy. That's the serverless architecture. But here in monolithic and Microsoft, you need to worry about the you know, uh, server and all those things. But this one is, so you don't need to worry about the servers. Just write the code and deploy directly in the cloud. That's the serverless architecture. Are we good? So the serverless architecture, as I mentioned, Azure is one, AWS and GCP. So you just write the code and deploy, that's it. So, and that's the no machine required, no servers required in the serverless architecture. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. So that's all about uh, application architecture. So. And I just want to give a brief on this. So that is the one uh, application architecture, very important uh, concept. Okay. So now uh, let's go and you know, target. What is the you know, development process will follow? So there is a you know, uh, software development life cycle. So that we need to understand. So. Software development life cycle is, uh, so in any company, first 
they will follow some approach uh, methodology they will follow and how a, a project will be developed let me give you already i have given a brief introduction there who are all involved in each uh, you know what are the different stages but let me give you in detailed uh, so uh, stages of uh, project development how project will start and uh, till deploy it will shipping to the customer so who are all involved i have given already but let me give you the stages what are all the stages will be there who will involve in each stage let's understand that so our testing team also participate there right so let's understand that so in detail okay so what is a software development life cycle sdlc what are all different phases are there so basically it's an approach a methodology where the project is developed in different stages to complete a project so from beginning of the project to till end of the project so you will go step by step stage by stage that is called software development life cycle so the first phase is requirements gathering who will do requirements gathering just now i told who is the person business analysts product owners product owner okay product owner is the or business analyst any one of them nowadays people are calling product owners po so those are the persons who gather the requirements and once those are ready it will be shared to all the team members so team members like uh, both uh, development and testing team right even architect also will be there so architect will explain you know design documents and everything he will draw and uh, you know explain to the team how it works how these requirements are going to work okay so that's a architect responsibility okay so once uh, this uh, first phase everybody you know read and understand the documents requirement document you will get a requirement document here itself in the feasibility study or requirements gathering phase itself and then the testers will uh, no testers and developers both will read and understand that uh, document requirement document and uh, so the testing activities will start in the beginning phase itself initial requirements gathering phase itself and the output document of first phase is uh, the requirement document the product owner will give that so everybody will go through that all the development and testing team will go through those requirement document and uh, analysis phase in the analysis system analyst will be uh, available and he is the person who analyzes the requirements and uh, he will check whether the application is possible to develop or not the application is technically possible or not legally possible or not financially possible or not he will analyze and which hardware software you we need to develop this project and how many resources required all this uh, analysis can be done by a system analyst uh, on this so meanwhile and as a you know testing team and development team please going on uh, the requirements they will go through the requirements they will understand the requirements if they don't understand they will uh, set up uh, inspection meetings and uh, to discuss all the our walk through walk throughs will happen review the requirements document and you can ask a product owner to get more clarity all you can set up on on this time so once so these are all analysis done requirements are ready and he, as a tester you will start designing the test cases so you will understand you will uh, design the test cases and uh, so the base document for is your requirement document uh, requirement document is the base for writing the test cases so who will design the test cases it's a responsibility of a tester who primary responsibility is on tester only to design the test cases 
So when tester will design, once you get the requirements, once you understand the requirements, then you will start writing the test cases. See, this is a verification activity. So writing the test cases is a verification activity. Understanding the requirements is a verification activity. So you will read and understand the requirements. Once you understand, then you will start designing the test cases. Designing the test cases is nothing but writing the test cases. That you will do in the second phase itself. Analysis phase itself, you will start it. But what are the base documents for you? Requirement documents. And the screen layouts, the screen layouts also will be given by UX designer. How the screens looks like, uh, what buttons are there, all this they will give in the uh, screen layouts. So the output documents is, uh, so requirement document, basically you can say requirement document, in detailed requirement document and uh, screen layouts will be there. In the third phase, a design phase. So here architect and you know, a technical lead will be involved in this design phase. Architect will design the documents and a high level design document you will design and where to go each you know, page, how it will interact with the different layers of the application. I have given already front end, back end uh, database layer, right? Front end, middle layer. Middle layer means I have shown you already. So the logic, basically the logic will be there in the middle layer. And uh, back end means a database. The database where data will store there. So those things, all the linking will be given in the design document. That's a HLD, high level design document. That is called design documents. And technical lead also will prepare a low level design document. In detail, you will write uh, so each module you will take and you will uh, sub modules prepares and uh, write the functionality. So that's a functional flow you will explain in the uh, low level design document. So in this design document, the output is HLD and LRD. HLD means high level design document, low level design document. That's a design. Next, coding. Coding means the implementation part. See, once a design is done, then only coding will happen. So in the coding phase, developers will be participated. Developers, programmers, developers are programmers are same. Development team are programmers, we call them. And the dev manager will be there. Uh, so they will participate in the coding phase. This is the longest phase. They will write the code. Uh, this, any application contains, I told you already, front end, user interface. As I have shown you here, the user interface will be the so main, right? User interface will be the main, as I mentioned very clearly here. So user interface. Let me show you that. Any application architecture, it will be like that. So these are the different people involved. Yeah, so these are the user interface. There's a front end. So the business logic is I was talking about middle layer and database is the back end. So, so this is the all layers I was talking here. So that's the, any application, these layers will be there. And the front end is developed using, so these languages, HTML, JavaScript, CSS. And middle layer is developed by programming languages like uh, Java, C Sharp, Python, Ruby, C++. And back end is a database is created and uh, data will be stored there. So there are different databases like MySQL, Oracle, MongoDB, Microsoft SQL Server, all this will be there. So that's the coding phase. So developers or programmers will start writing the logic 
based on the requirement functionality. And uh, the ones the developer write the code um, application a little bit ready. And uh, so they will do a unit testing. So first testing is done by developers. What is that? Unit testing. Who will do unit testing? Unit testing is done by a development team. So what they will do in the unit? So they have written the code, right? Whether that code is working or not, they have to check. So they have written so many functions. So each function, when you give a input data, whether it is giving output or not, they will write the unit test cases. And that unit testing is done on their development end. So dev team will, once all the unit test cases are passed, they will prepare a build. Build is nothing but a collection of software code they have written. So they will prepare a build, they will make it a package, and they will deploy in one environment. So why do you need environment? If you want to test, you need environment. That environment will be prepared. So you have uh, staging, pre-prod, production, dev environment. Like that, we have different environments. So those environments, this code will be deployed. So they will deploy there. Then, so build URL is ready and they will inform, development team will inform, okay, my coding is done, unit testing is done, unit test case all passed in from my end, now ready for testing. So now, so development task is done. Now it will start a testing team. So in that, so now testers, they will inform in the meeting, okay? The testing team will start their testing. So that's the, uh, no, till this we'll uh, stop here and let's join back and we'll uh, continue this uh, testing phase, okay? Any questions here? No. Okay.